Okay, let me start off by apologizing for not posting at all in the last month. So I was actually in the process of making this video last weekend, but in the middle of it, my computer crashed and it just died on me. So I had to take it to the Apple store and they shipped it off and they got it wiped and cleaned completely. So this thing is empty right now. Yeah, anyways, yeah, sorry for not posting that much. Um, the adjustment to college has definitely been a bit of a struggle. But I think at this point, I've kind of gotten the hang of it. Uh, I just took my first two midterms this week and they went pretty well, I think. Uh, I don't think I failed, hopefully. A bunch of you guys have been hopping in my DMs on Instagram and asking me to share my college essays, to read my college essays, and to share some tips on the college application process. So with the college essay deadline rolling right around the corner, I figured this would be the perfect time to share with you guys my college essay and my thoughts on the whole college application process. Okay, so the first essay I'm gonna read is my Common App essay. And there's like a couple of different like topics you can choose from, but I think I just chose the topic that was like right on whatever you want. So yeah, um, this essay specifically is about my experiences in high school and with my computer science teacher and my computer science class. So for the sake of privacy, I will be referring to him in this video as Mr. Robot. Yeah, okay. Jack Robot is a tall, slender man whose hair is a mop of unruly dark curls. His erect posture is evidence of his time in the Navy. He swears like a sailor too. Ow! God damn it! Mr. Robot winced, clutched his fingers, and cursed the vicious screwdriver that had attacked his hand. Another failed attempt at prying apart the stubborn hard drive. This obviously isn't working. I'm gonna grab something. I'll be right back. A few minutes later, he returned with a hammer in his hand and determination in his eyes. Mr. Robot placed the hard drive on the table and raised the hammer high over his head. He glared at his target and took a deep breath. Bang. No results, just a small dent. Bang. Now a crevice, revealing a hint of the answers that we saw. Crack. With a final strike, the lid split open. Mr. Robot grinned, pleased with his victory. Well, there you go. What started as a basic lesson in hardware turned into an obsession to crack open the magic silver box. I was struggling to visualize the material because of the textbook's poor explanation of how a tiny device stores billions of bytes of information. Taking action, Mr. Robot suggested that we open one up. My friends and I peered inside the dented casing and found a metal arm hovering over a silver disc. Mr. Robot pointed out the parts and their various functions. The previously incomprehensible ideas were now alive, and I could finally visualize how a hard drive works. Once we finished inspecting it, Mr. Robot noticed a small imperfection under a sticker on the casing. Peeling it off, he chuckled. I found our problem. There was a screw hidden under the sticker. And sure enough, there it was. A tiny Phillips head that almost succeeded in stopping us from getting inside. The room erupted in laughter as we realized how that simple detail had led us to such extreme measures. There's this unspoken universal fear of looking stupid. This is especially true in my high-level AP and IB courses where one innocent question or silly mistake leads to laughter from the entire class. Everyone expects you to automatically know everything. If you don't, they smirk and stare, words dripping with condescension. Aren't you supposed to be smart? I dreaded moments like these. I had come from a small rural school and I found myself unfamiliar with traditional educational concepts when I transferred to my large public high school. Mathematical basics such as factoring and logarithms were forward to me and led to the initial struggles in my coursework. Because of the gaps in my knowledge, I'd approach problems with unconventional strategies and inquiries, only to be met with ridicule. Sinking into my chair, I'd question my own intelligence. Do I even belong here? 
Computer science showed me that I did belong. Whenever I felt puzzled about one of our coding exercises, Mr. Robot always told me to start with the most ridiculous solution. No matter how dumb it may seem, or no matter how trivial it is, just try to see if it will work. You can always optimize it later. This philosophy was especially evident in the instance of the hard drive. We couldn't have known the screw was going to be there, so we went with the most extreme solution possible, busting it open. IV Computer Science has not only taught me the fundamentals of object-oriented programming, but also it has revealed a more important lesson. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and don't be afraid to look stupid. Oftentimes, the best answers start with the most ridiculous questions and solutions. There is no wrong way to pursue knowledge, even if it means using a hammer to open a hard drive. Okay, so my next essay was, uh, most students choose their intended major or area of study based on a passion or an inspiration that's developed over time. What passion or inspiration led you to choose this area of study? Looking around my room, one can immediately see my obsession with Transformers. Action figures decorate the shelves with characters spanning from different movies, television shows, and even comic books. They take the forms of airplanes, tanks, and sports cars. Although it's pretty cool that these robots are able to take alternate forms to disguise themselves, what always fascinated me the most was that these robots were alive, each with a different soul, personality, and characteristics. They could feel emotions, sadness when their comrades died, and anger when they sought revenge. The idea that metallic and mechanical objects could come to life deeply intrigued me. Seeking to recreate my childhood heroes, I begged my parents to buy me a Lego Mindstorm kit for Christmas. A set of Legos, motors, sensors, and a small computer called a brick. I may have been young, only a second grader, but I quickly caught on to the simple drag and drop programming system. I was able to create cars that can navigate my house on their own and shoot a cannon once detecting an enemy, my little brother. Upon further practice, I was even able to construct a robot that could solve a Rubik's Cube. I brought some of these robots to elementary school and my creations were the star of recess, prompting many students to stay inside and watch my robots rather than go onto the playground. As a devout Catholic, I know it's wrong to want to play God, but when I'm programming, I can't help but embrace that feeling of limitless creation. Though I've graduated from drag and drop to languages like Java and C, I still feel the same rush of excitement creating advanced data structures or solving Euler problems as I did when I was playing with Legos. So the topic for my next essay is many students pursue college for a specific degree, career opportunity, or personal goal. Whichever it may be, learning will be critical to achieve your ultimate goal. As you think ahead to the process of learning during your college years, how will you define a successful college experience? 300 word maximum. Some of the best memories I have of high school are the personal moments I shared with my teachers, especially with my computer science teacher, Mr. Robot. I would eat lunch in his class with my friends discussing topics that went further than our IB computer science curriculum. We ponder the halting problem, the complexity of P versus NP, figure out if our calculators were Turing complete, discuss the power of quantum computers, as well as other topics that lay on the boundaries of the field of computer science. At Carnegie Mellon, I hope to continue to go beyond what is being taught in the classroom and learn about bleeding edge theoretical computer science through research and projects outside the classroom. I also intend to take full advantage of the professors at Carnegie Mellon and visit them during office hours to build relationships with them and to learn about their personal work. Not only do I hope to get close with my mentors, but I also wish to work closely and collaborate with my peers. I want to connect with like-minded individuals to accomplish projects, goals, and initiatives. Entrepreneurship and business is something I am extremely passionate about, and being able to start a small company or side business with my peers at Carnegie Mellon would be a valuable experience. I also believe that effective learning not only comes from within the campus, but also from a real-world environment in the workforce. I would take full advantage of the many internships and jobs that Carnegie Mellon could connect me with that would provide me with networking opportunities, a taste of the industry, and the chance to learn how to work in a team project setting. So the topic for my final essay is consider your application as a whole. What do you personally want to emphasize about your application for the admission committee's consideration? Highlight something that's important to you or something that you haven't had the chance to share. Tell us, don't show us. I continue to the back of my old elementary school when my classroom awaits me. Mrs. Smith greets me as I walk in and introduces me to the kids. Everyone, this is Mr. Nathan. The kids reply in unison. Hello, Mr. Nathan. A little creepy, but still cute. I chuckle. Hi, everyone. I'm only 17, so please just call me Nathan. I love my time as a student at Terra Vista Elementary. It's where I was introduced to computer science through a Lego robotics club and to business through an entrepreneurship project where I sold the world's greatest slingshots. These interests have continued into my teenage years and now I hope to pursue quantitative analysis. 
a career that represents the marriage of computer science and economics through the development of applications that influence intelligent financial decisions. Unfortunately, many students within my high school don't plan for a potential career and choose not to go to college after graduating. In order to combat this, my friends and I founded Project Passion, an initiative in which we introduce elementary and middle school students to different careers. As of the STEM workshop, I showcase careers in technology through projects and presentations. I set up team programming workshops, introduce kids to basic coding through activities, and I'm even working on creating a video game collaboratively with the students. Although it can be a little hectic sometimes trying to manage a classroom of hyper kids, the awe in their eyes and their never ending excited questions drive me to become a better mentor. The community of my elementary school represented a special place where I first loved learning. Now I return, not as a student, but as a teacher. I love so yeah, those were my college essays that got me into Carnegie Mellon. One big tip that I have is be authentic to yourself, right? So mine wasn't super creative or it wasn't super sad or emotional or wasn't super funny either. It was, it was pretty simple and it just talked about like, it just talked about my life in high school and what I struggled with. You know, I, I, how I learned to gain conviction and confidence in the classroom and how to start asking questions and grow out of my shell. And don't get me wrong, this isn't something I've completely battled or gotten over. Imposter syndrome is definitely a real thing at Carnegie Mellon. Like I still have those moments where I'm questioning myself like, oh my God, like, do I belong here with like all these smart kids? But like, I'll just like reflect back on like how I felt in high school. It's like, oh, I kind of felt the same way, you know? Like you'll always have these big jumps in life and you'll obviously get to the next level and you'll get to places where you want to be. And there's gonna be kids there and people there who have gone through the same thing and are at that exact same level. So obviously you're not going to be the best person in the classroom anymore. So you're just gonna have to learn to adapt. You're just gonna have to learn how to work twice as hard as you used to. Like it's not something like, like a super crazy or super deep lesson, but it was something I cared about and it was something that I thought was pretty authentic to me. And I think that's what's just more, most important. Uh, another big tip is to follow advice, but don't follow advice too much. So what I mean by that is like, okay, so for example, people will give conflicting information about how early you should start your college essays. Like I've heard people say that like, oh yeah, like I did my essay like the day before it was due when I got in. And then I'll hear people say that they start their essays in the summer. So just know and be aware of how long it typically takes you to complete essays and just kind of like be reasonable about it, right? Like if you start too early, you'll like burn out and you'll get paranoid about it as you keep on re-editing it. But if you start too late, then you'll obviously like run out of time and you won't be submitting your best work. Another advice that I hear that is pretty conflicting is like how many people you should have read your essay and edit your essay for you, right? So for this one, I'd kind of reflect on yourself and think, hey, how easily am I going to be influenced if I send this out to people? Or like, what kind of people do I trust to read this essay who I know won't be kind of changing it too much, right? Like if you send it out to too many people, then the voice of your essay will change. It won't be as authentic anymore. But if you send it to too little people, then you're not getting critical feedback. So send it to people you trust. It's kind of the same thing with the deadlines, like know how easily you are impacted by other people's opinions and just be aware of that as you're sending it out and having people kind of read it for you and edit it for you. So the biggest tip I can give for the college essays is learn to love the essay. And what I mean by that is don't dread it or don't antagonize it. Treat it as a sort of self-reflection process. You're going to be at a point in your life when you're writing your essays where you're going to be experiencing like a big shift, right? You're leaving high school and you're going off onto your own to college. So you'll rarely have another time like this where you'll be able to kind of reflect on this change, you know, reflect on the past, reflect on your childhood, reflect on your dreams and think about what you really want to do in life, you know? So rather than kind of like treating this as an interview or a test of your achievements, treat it as an introspective journey for yourself. I promise you like once you start to treat it like that, everything will just become so much easier and everything will just flow easier. It'll become more authentic. You'll become more proud of your essays, more confident of them, and it'll just be of higher quality. The essays are the most important part of the college application process. They're what distinguishes you from everyone else. They're what distinguishes you from everyone else with the same activities and SAT score as you. So I hope that these tips were able to kind of help guide you guys. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, stay tuned for more stuff, subscribe, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah.
like a brick truck, looking like I'm TikTok, shining like a wristwatch. I'm a 